In this problem, we have a crate that's rotating about point A. It impacts the ground, and then there's a rebound. We're told at point B is a perfectly plastic impact, and we're asked to determine the angle through which the crate rotates upwards, as well as the percentage of energy lost in the impact, because we know impacts include energy loss unless they are perfectly elastic. We're asked to assume that friction prevents the slipping of either point A or point B when the crate is rotating around it. So we're going to have to solve this with impulse momentum to get the initial change in angular velocity across the impact, and then we'll use work energy to get the amount it rotates back up. So we can say that state one, this is just before impact, we will have our crate, this is A, this is B, it's rotating at some omega one, about A, so A is acting like a pin. We know that there's some normal force and some friction force, static friction at A, as well as the weight, mg. State two is gonna be just after impact. So we will have some weight again and some huge impact force right here as well as a friction force, static friction. At A, there's not going to be any forces because just after the impact, it'll have started to lift off. Because impact forces are really large, so we can say the impulse due to the impact force is very much larger than any other impulse in the problem. Because of that, we can say that angular momentum, K, at point B is conserved. We can say that about point B and point B only because we're going to assume all other impulses are negligible. And at point B is the only point where this large impact force has no moment arm. If it has no moment arm, it has no angular impulse, and therefore we can say angular momentum is conserved from state one to two. So what does that look like? So angular momentum about B for state one. We have to cal calculate it about the same point in both states. B is not the point it's rotating about in state one, however. Over here, B acts like a pin in state two, but not in state one. So how are we gonna calculate this? We're gonna say about a point that's not the center of gravity, we get IG omega one, plus R G with respect to B, the center of gravity with respect to the point B, crossed with M V G one. Now the interesting thing here is that G with respect to B, let's just move that a little bit. G with respect to B is on this line And it happens that the velocity of G1 is also going to be in the same direction 
because they're both perpendicular to the distance between G and A. As a result, this cross product equals zero because we've got two vectors in the same direction and the cross of two vectors in the same direction is zero. You can do out the, uh, find out the vectors and do the cross product and you'll see that that works. This is only because we have a square object. It is A and A on both sides. So this is not universally true, it just happens to be true in this case. KB2. So now we are rotating about B as a pin, so we can use the simpler pinned version IB omega 2. We have to pick a direction for omega 2. I'm just going to pick this direction. Uh, it should be going this way. We can see from the image up here, it has to be rotating this way. Okay, so conservation of angular momentum. When we have omega 1 is in the negative k hat direction and omega 2 is in the negative k hat direction, we get i g negative omega 1 equals negative i b omega 2, the scalar. Or that we have a relationship between our two angular velocities of ig over ib. We're going to be asked to find the energy loss states 1 to 2. So we can look at the energy for state 1. We know that it is essentially in the same position. So our potential energy is going to be the same. So we only care about the kinetic energy. This is going to be T1 equals, and remember A is acting like a pin, so we can say 1 half IA omega 1 squared. At state 2, we can say B is acting like a pin, so that's 1 half IB omega 2 squared. Because this is a square, so both A and B are the same distance from the center of gravity, IA equals IB. So we can say that the change in energy is going to be the difference, 1 half IB omega 2 squared minus 1 half IB omega 1 squared or 1 half oops, IB omega 2 squared minus omega 1 squared. We have an expression for omega 2 and omega 1. We'll sub that in. We get 1 half IB will have IG over IB omega 1 all squared minus omega 1 squared or 1 half IB IG squared over IB squared minus 1 omega 1 squared. Now we need to know something about those um, mass moments of inertia. So we're just going to sketch out our, our crate. We know these sides are A, this is G, this distance we can say is D, that's 45, and this is A over 2. So we can say D cos 45 equals A over 2 or that d equals a over root 2. And then ig is 1 12th m. It's going to be 2a squared, because we have a squared plus a squared, which is 1 6 ma squared. 
and IB equals IG plus MD squared. So that's 1 6 MA squared plus M A squared over 2. So we square the top and bottom of this term over here. That equals 1 6 MA squared plus 3 6 MA squared or 4 6 4 6 MA squared. And we'll rewrite that as 2 thirds MA squared. So then the term in our kinetic energy, delta, delta T, we'll just work out this, this squared ratio. That's going to be 1 6 MA squared, all squared, over 2 thirds MA squared, all squared. MA's cancel and we end up with 1 over 36 times 9 over 4, 36 and 4 cancel, or 1 16th. So our percent change in kinetic energy from 1 to 2 is going to be delta T times 100 over T1, the initial amount of energy that we had. We end up with 1 half IB omega 1 squared ig squared over ib squared minus 1 all over 1 half ib omega 1 squared all times 100 that initial kinetic energy cancels out we end up with 1 16th minus 1 times 100 we end up seeing that the percent energy loss from 1 to 2 is going to be equal to 93.75%. So we're actually losing the vast majority of our energy through impact. This is why we can't say energy is conserved across the impact unless we're explicitly told that. All right, so we have a relationship here between state one and state two in terms of omega. And what we want to find is the angle through which the box rebounds. So let's talk state three. Um, at the top of the rebound. So we have our box here. It's rotated some angle theta. There's still a normal force and static friction, keeping it where it should be. So this is point B, this is point A. Here we have point G in the middle, and there's some MG at point G. This distance between G and B is going to be D, and this angle is 45 degrees. I'm going to choose my datum as the ground. So we just want to call back state 2. Our boxes was like this. Here's our datum. And here's G. And this distance was A over 2. So V2 was mg a over 2 and we can recall that t2 was 1 half ib omega 2 squared. Okay. There are no non-conservative forces so energy is conserved. Energy is conserved 2 to 3. We need to find t3 which is 0. So at the very peak, the maximum theta, it's not going to be moving. It'll be coming down just after that. And V3 is going to be mg d sine of 45 plus theta. 
So we want this distance between G and the ground right there. We know that D equals A over root 2, so then this equals MG A over root 2 sine 45 plus theta. And then we can write T2 plus V2 equals T3 plus V3, where T3 is 0. We end up with 1 half IB omega 2 squared plus mg a over 2 equals mg a over root 2 sine 45 plus theta. We recall that we found that omega 2 squared is equal to ig squared over ib squared omega 1 squared or 1 16th omega 1 squared and that IB is 2 thirds MA squared. So we're going to put those in. We get 1 half of 2 thirds MA squared times 1 16th omega 1 squared plus MGA over 2 equals mg a over root 2 sine of 45 plus theta. We get to cancel out all the m's. We get to cancel out 1a in the first and the a's across. We can cancel out these 1 halves. It'll end up being root 2 on the top. We can say that this is 8, and we end up with 1 24th A omega 1 squared plus G equals G root 2 sine of 45 plus theta. So we're solving that sine 45 plus theta equals 1 over g root 2, 1 24th of a omega 1 squared plus g. We'll put in the numbers there. It's 1 over root 2, 9.81 times 1 24th of, we're told that's 0 0.8 meters, times omega 1 was 4, so 4 squared plus 9.81. We can find this equals 0 0.7455. Arc sine, we get 45 plus theta equals 48.21 degrees, or that theta equals 3.21 degrees. So you can see it's not rebounding back that much. And why would that be? Probably because most of the energy was lost in the collision. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.